What the? Oh. Hello, YouTube. Didn't hear you come in. Uh, this? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in this. Yeah, if you want. Um, well, it's, it's a node in a suitcase. Um, basically what I found is that uh, with my job I'm moving around quite a lot and uh, as a result it's hard work having to set up a, a PC, some sort of a, an interface and then a radio um, every single time I move. And every time I move I have to pack it away and you know radios are getting scratched, things are getting damaged, cables are ending up getting loose and pulled out so I wanted to build something a bit more rugged if you like something I can chuck in the boot of the car and it's ready to go so that's what this is I've had this uh, tool case for quite a while I used to use it for all my tools I've since outgrown it so it's just been sat, sat, sat around and I'm not using it so uh, I've built the entire node into here so um, what we've got is on off switch on the front done with a, a couple of keys I'm on the the idea being that um, what I can do is switch it on and lock it on. Um, what I found before is that before this I had a, a simple flick switch and it wasn't too difficult to catch it and just switch the whole lot off. Once that happened, it takes some time to log back in and sort it all out. So uh, yeah, there you go. It's got a you know lockable on and off. Um, it's a simple lock. It wouldn't be hard for someone to defeat, but it's just for uh, a bit of security there. But then um, one of these panorama style um, drill through antennas on the top. Um, before people start complaining about the ground plane, you'll see that in a minute. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the main clips, these two uh, lock also, so I can actually lock it closed. It's not waterproof, but it's water resistant-ish. Um, and this is what you're greeted with inside. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll grab the camera and I will show you through the various bits and bobs that are inside. Okie dokie then. Right. So I guess the first thing I'll talk you through is what we saw from the outside. Um, we've got the antenna, obviously once we've got the case open. This just opens up like that. Um, it's fairly... Uh, stiff there. Um, underneath you can see how it's mounted and basically it's not perfect but this strip of metal is you know relatively thick. It's full circumference all the way around um, and it is there is a, a, a decent metal connection underneath here but I'm going to put a, an earth strap across so that there'd also be all this under here as well so it's a relatively decent bit of uh, metal there to work from I've tested the SWR at uh, you know 430 megahertz and thereabouts and it's fairly reasonable so I'm quite happy with that um, and then the on off switch just pokes out behind here um, nothing too complicated there really um, I guess the heart of it all really is this uh, clear tone PC. Um, I got this from a well known online auction site which I'll refrain from sort of uh, advertising too much. Um, I'm sure you get the picture. It's got a load of uh, connectors on this side, I'm not sure if that will show up too well on the camera and then down here and all it is really is just a 12 volt mobile PC and that's it nothing special really, it's just a, a little motherboard um, when I got it, it didn't have a hard drive and it took me a long time to figure out where the hard drive goes it's not as simple as it sounds um, and it turns out it's a flashcard based jobby so 
it's actually a solid state hard drive, there's no moving parts. Which suits me down to the ground because I can take it mobile and not feel guilty about sort of knocking it around. It's a slow machine, it's about 700 megahertz and it's got uh, 500 megabytes of RAM I believe. Uh, not a great deal but it does the job. Um, all it needs to do is run XP which is what I've got running on there and TeamSpeak and uh, TeamViewer so that I can remote control it. Um, it's internet connection comes from one of these three broadband dongles um, when Windows starts up this uh, the, the auto run XE for this is in the start folder so it automatically starts that up um, so we've got a, a bog standard USB sound card I've removed the case and heat shrunk it just to make it a little bit smaller I couldn't fit the two things right next to each other on the USB what I may well do is run an extension lead up and uh, have this mounted up out of the way I'm also working on uh, some of these ones I've got um, external antenna sockets some of these modems so I may find a way of uh, working that into the case so that it's got an external antenna to work from but so far so good um, next thing the whole lot is powered by one of these 12 amp hour batteries um, I've got a bit of threaded rod goes through this uh, piece of MDF it's about a quarter of an inch thick um, and it's captive bolt underneath so this threaded rod won't move. I've put a bit of heat shrink wrap around it, stop things from getting scratched. So you can see how the uh, battery is held down. I've recessed the wood. I don't know if you can see it slightly down there. But I've used a router to sort of uh, recess the wood out. So the battery can't move left and right. It can't move forwards and backwards. And because of this bar, it can't move up and down. So that's totally secure. Um, I've not got it completely tight at the minute. Um, power straight round through a little 15 amp fuse I'm going to drop that down to a 5 amp fuse uh, when I get one I've not got any 5 amp fuses here they're all gone um, through this just a bit of a distribution block and then power shoots off out to various different places uh, next thing is Motorola MTH800 hands free kit um, it's, that's the that's the actual main control box and then you've got the cradle up here so with the cradle all I do is I take an MTH800 stick it in here right that's it it's attached that simple if I want the MTH800 out press that and out it comes no big deal I'm sure you uh, you understand what's going on here um, out of the bottom of the cradle you've got uh, an RF connection there um, that corresponds with the antenna socket which is just above the Motorola Batwing symbol there yep it's just come into focus and that obviously corresponds with this here so I plug it in here the radio recognizes starts to ignore its top built antenna and everything starts to come out of here <coughs> All that jiggery pokery comes through to uh, this uh, duplexer and it gives you a separate antenna socket for GPS and the actual uh, communications antenna. So I've got two connections here, one's for the actual uh, built-in antenna on the top of the case, the, uh, the panorama jobby, and this is for the uh, GPS antenna. Um, those cables come up around here yes I know I know I'm no I'm not supposed to do it I'm gonna secure all this a little bit better at some point I'm getting to it GPS antenna won't work so well from inside the case I know it's just a test bed and um, all I'm doing here is just testing the theory of whether or not all this will work in the case that's all um, so the sound card gets connected up to one of my uh, infamous Vox circuits you notice there's no dials on this one everything's internal, I've set it all up internally and it just gets left so um, that's it pretty much um, there's, there's nothing really else to it 
Um, it does work. I've taken it for a drive. Um, it stays connected. There have been a few times where it's disconnected when it's handing over from cell to cell on the uh, on the three network. But I think I may be able to square that away with an external antenna. Um, and that's the only issue with it at the minute. The battery gives me um, a good 12 hours use. Um, no problem whatsoever with that. I've got a, a couple of different power supply ideas. I mean, obviously, I've got a lot of space here. Um, so I'm going to put a power supply in here. Maybe have a, you know, something like a, a kettle socket here. Um, one of the three pin, is it called IDC sockets? Um, something like that. So I can just plug a kettle lead in to charge the whole lot up. And there you go, really. Um, as a sideline to all this, in the same bundle, I received this. It's a clear tone touchscreen. It's out of a. It's all ex police stuff out of a police car. Um, but it's a. It's a nice touchscreen. Um, just bringing the label into focus here, just in case anybody recognises it. Um, it's clear tone branded but made in Taiwan. Um, I'd really like to get this up and running, but I've never played with touch screens before. And have a look at this. I'm just waiting for it to come into Does focus. Does anybody recognise that connector? Does anybody... Is this an industry standard for, uh, for touch screen? I've no idea what it is. Um, it says VGA. Um, however, I'm not sure, you know, I've never seen a connector like that. I've tried Google searching it. I did count the pins once. I don't remember how many there are. Um, I'm not going to try counting them right now. But you get the idea. I wonder if anybody knows anything about this. Um, power is separate. Power supplied there. Um, but as, if anybody's seen one of these connectors, I'd be much appreciated. Um, if anybody knows what that is, what it's called. And then I can uh, look it up. But that's about it people so yeah any comments any thoughts any ideas i'll do a video with this actually working um it does work it is a good bit of kit it, it really does do the job uh, and what i've been doing is i just stick it in the boot of the car running um and i can use either the mobile set in the car to talk through it or use the uh the clear tone in dmo repeat mode and obviously that increases range significantly um, back to a handheld so there you go guys um, I'd like to get the uh, touch screen mounted somewhere-ish here that would be nice and then all the functions can be routed through touch screen okay that's enough for now and I'll catch you soon thanks for watching